and welcome back to the next segment of the American V8 engine history. Today we are going to delve into the Cadillac line of V8 engines. Now Cadillac has a pretty long and interesting history. The Cadillac V8 engines started pretty early. 1914 was the first year for the first Cadillac V8. Now it is important to understand that the early Cadillac V8s that were made back then were flathead V8s, much like the Ford flathead V8. And they were also cast in several sections. They were not a monoblock construction. That was one of the main differences between the Ford mass-produced flathead V8 and the earlier Cadillac V8s and some of the other manufacturers where they actually cast the block in multiple sections and then they bolted them together. The crankcase and the cylinders were separately cast. The drawback is that it was far more time consuming and far more expensive than the monoblock construction. They later did go to a monoblock or a single block construction, but Ford actually did it first with their flathead. The 314 inch Cadillac engine had a bore and stroke combination of 3.125 on the bore. And one thing that was a theme with Cadillac back in those days is they had these super long strokes. The strokes of these engines was, was really way longer than the bore size, which is conducive to a high torque, low, low horsepower engine. Uh, that's the way that a lot of diesel engines are designed, especially the big semi truck engines. Very, very long stroke and a relatively small bore compared to the stroke. So they had this bore and stroke combination in their first 314 of 3.125, which is a pretty small bore, and a stroke of five inches, 124 thousandths. <laughs> had a, a five inch stroke, which is crazy. So, but that's the way they built their engines. The 314, the 314 engine put out about 70 horsepower and there was a lot of different variations during the year span that the engine was made. The next iteration of this, in 1928, Cadillac produced a 341 cubic inch flathead engine, again, based on the same architecture as the 314, but with a larger bore and a shorter stroke. It had a bore of 3.812 and a stroke of 3.625, three and five eighths inch stroke. The 341 was produced for two years from 1938 to 1940 and it produced 90 horsepower. In 1930, they produced the 353 cubic inch flathead V8 and this kind of went back to the smaller bore and the longer stroke. The 353 had a 3.380 bore and a 4.940 stroke, very long stroke. The 353 produced 95 horsepower and it was made for four or five years in some of their early production cars. Now in 1936, Cadillac went to a monoblock construction, kind of copying what Ford was doing at the time. Instead of casting the block in these sections and bolting them together, they came up with a block that was cast all in one piece, like most of the blocks that we know today, but it was a flathead configuration. It was a 322 cubic inch monoblock construction engine, and it had a bore of 3.375 and a very long stroke of 4.500. In 1937, they take, took that same engine and they increased the bore size to three and a half inches, but retained the stroke of the 322, which was four and a half inches, to create the 346 cubic inch or the 5.7 liter, basically right in the area of three foot, just slightly shy of 350 cubic inches, which was a pretty good size engine for the day. Now, what's interesting about the 346 is the military actually used the 346 in some of the early tanks in the late 30s and early 40s. And what they did is they actually put two of these engines in a tank side by side and they coupled them together to power some of the tanks that were produced at the time, mainly the M5 Stuart and the M24 tank, both of which were used in World War II. So really, instead of an eight cylinder engine, these tanks had 16 cylinders via the use of two of these flathead 346 cubic inch engines. 
and they were pretty successful and pretty reliable as tank engines. They were definitely reliable, heavy duty engines that did the job. In 1937, they produced the 390 cubic inch flathead V8. And this was actually the first engine that was available in Cadillacs that had an automatic or hydromatic transmission. It had a bore of 3.750 and it retained the stroke of the previous two engines of four inches, 500 thousandths, or four and a half inches. The 390 produced 125 horsepower and the torque was not made available in these years. It would have been interesting to see the torque of these engines because really long stroke engines are conduce conducive to making a lot more torque than horsepower. So when we say the 390 had a 125 horsepower, you can bet that it had a torque that was considerably higher than that. Unfortunately, those numbers from Cadillac at the time were not produced and nobody really knows what they are. So we, all we can do is guess, but suffice it to say, they were certainly higher than the horsepower numbers based on the amount of stroke that these engines had. Now that brings us to the overhead valve engines. In 1949, Cadillac produced a 331 cubic inch overhead valve V8. It had a bore of 3.187 and a three and five eighths or 3.625 stroke. The 331 was also the first Cadillac that was made available with hydraulic lifters and a hydraulic valve train. It was seven and a half to one compression and it made 165 horsepower and again no torque numbers available but definitely an improvement over the flathead v8 horsepower numbers in 1956 cadillac increased the bore size to four inches and they retained the stroke of 3.625 that the 331 had this engine was produced from 1956 to 1959 the horsepower levels were 285 with a four barrel carburetor 300 horsepower with a four barrel carburetor and higher compression and they, well, interestingly enough, they also had a tri-power setup, three two-barrel carburetors in 1958, and it produced 345 horsepower, which it was, was pretty decent for the day. But again, at this point, no torque numbers, which is unfortunate from Cadillac. It's all the information we've got. Now, in 1963, Cadillac produced a new low-deck engine, the first of which was a 390 cubic inch engine, not to be confused with the 390 flathead from the earlier days, which was a completely different engine. The only thing they had in common was their cubic inch size. The 390 low deck block was an overhead valve push rod type engine, of course, produced in 1963. Interestingly enough, this engine was the first Cadillac engine produced that actually used an alternator on the engine rather than a generator. It had a bore of four inches and a stroke of 3.875 to produce 390 cubic inches, which was actually the same bore size as the previous 365 version, but they increased the stroke to 3.875. They made a high compression version of this engine available in the Eldorado that made 345 horsepower. In the other vehicles that it was installed in, it had a four barrel carburetor, lower compression, and it made 325 horsepower and 425 foot pounds of torque. Most of these engines that we talk about from here on, we'll be able to give you the torque numbers as well. Now the following year in 1964, Chrysler produced the 429 cubic engine and engine and they actually increased the bore and the stroke for the 429. It had a 4.130 bore and a four inch stroke. Incidentally 64 was also the last year for the 390 but it was a transitionary year so it wasn't uncommon to find 429s and 390s in the 64 model year. They were both available. The following year in 65 the 390s were no longer and the 429 was the engine that was available from 65 through 67. The 429 four barrel version had 340 horsepower and 480 foot pounds of torque. This was also the first Cadillac engine to receive a PCV or positive crankcase ventilation system. And it was available in pretty much every Cadillac car that was available during those years. In 1968, Cadillac produced an all new engine. It was a completely new design and they produced the 472 cubic inch Cadillac 
Many of the viewers, if you're a Cadillac fan, you're gonna, you will know this engine. It is a very common engine, a very well known for Cadillac, and it was produced from 1968 all the way through 1974. Cadillac was kind of lagging behind, so the re that's the reason that the designers and the engineers were given the job to make a bigger cubic engine and a redesign. The 472 had a better cooling system. It had, it was actually a lighter block and produced very, very good power and reliability. The 472 had a four inch 300 thousandths bore and a 4.060 stroke. It produced 375 horsepower and a whopping 525 foot pounds of torque, which is incredible. Lots of torque out of these engines. A lot of guys have taken the 472 and its big brother, the 500, and slapped them into small light cars. I had a buddy that put one in an S10. There was a hot rod magazine issue many, many years ago where they took a 500 cubic inch Cadillac, which is basically the big brother to the 472, and they stuck it in a Chevette. And I'm not sure who did that. I think it might've been Steve Mignante, but I'm not sure. But anyway, there is, you can look that up. They called it the 500 cubic inch, $500 vet, but it was actually a Chevette, not a Corvette. Very, very interesting article. One of the things about the 472 engine family is Cadillac made 25% less gasketed joints on the engine, so it was less prone to leakage, and they designed it so it would be a lower maintenance engine. It would, it would go longer intervals and really be more reliable without the required maintenance of the earlier engine. So it was actually a really good designed engine. The highest horsepower version had 10 and a half to one compression, but of course, as it progressed through the mid to later 70s, in 74, it went away and the 500 took over. In 1970, they produced the 500 cubic inch Cadillac, which was basically the same engine family, similar block to the 472. It actually had the same bore as the 472, but they extended the stroke from four inches and 60 thousandths to produce 500 cubic inches. Cadillac actually had the biggest V8 of any of the manufacturers. Chevy did the 454. There was the 455s from Buick. There was the 460 from Ford. Cadillac just said, you know what? We're going to go for 500 cubic inches. So it was the, actually the largest production V8 in that era. The Cadillac in 1970 had 400 horsepower and 550. 50 foot-pounds of torque. So this thing was a real torque monster and that's why a lot of the hot rodders would pull these out of the big Cadillacs from 1970 and from the early 70s and stuff them in an S10 or something really small. They didn't even really have to modify the engine and they just had an absolute street monster. Very, very good engine, very high torque engine, very durable and very reliable. Now, unfortunately for the big block Cadillacs, just like every other manufacturer, which is kind of a sad note on these engines, the EPA, the CAFE restrictions, all of these restrictions for emissions and so forth and gas mileage is put on these manufacturers, and it basically killed these big blocks. By 1976, the Cadillac 500 went away. And in 76, it was a, a shell of what it used to be because they had restricted it with compression ratio and all kinds of other things for unleaded fuel. The 1976 500 Cadillac produced 190 horsepower and 360 foot-pounds of torque, which is a far cry from 400 horsepower and 550 torque. So if you're looking for one of these engines, you want the early 70s version or you wanna get one of the later ones and rebuild it with the same components that the early 70s had. They didn't really change the block or the head design, the head a little bit, but you could build the later Cadillacs in the same configuration as the early one and get that 550 foot-pounds of torque and you get yourself a real monster there. So the 500 cubic inch Cadillac, a fantastic engine, very short-lived, gone way too soon, kind of a, it's a little bit sad, but it is what it is. The 500 cubic inch was basically a square motor. It had the same bore and the same stroke or very close within a very small margin. So it was considered a square engine. Really good for torque and some decent horsepower. Now, here's another very interesting thing that happened. 
is Cadillac actually reintroduced the 472 cubic inch engine in 1977. I thought that was very odd, but that's what they did. But it had a smaller bore of 4.082 and a stroke of 4.060. This was a lightened up version of the 472. It was actually 100 pounds lighter than the earlier version, the 472 and the 500. And they were doing that to try to meet the cafe gas mileage requirements. So they figure, well, let's make this thing with a smaller bore and let's lighten it up so it will get better gas mileage. This later engine had a four barrel carburetor and it produced 180 horsepower and 320 foot pounds of torque. And it was found in all the Cadillacs during those years, except for the Seville and the El, El Dorado. Unfortunately, the 472, the remake of the 472, was not able to meet the standards of the gas mileage requirements from CAFE or the emissions requirements. And so after a few years, it went away really quickly because they're like, yeah, this is not working. We're not meeting the standards that are required by the government. So they reduced the bore of the 472 to three inch 800 and of course retained the same 4.060 stroke in hopes that they would get better gas mileage. This was a 368 cubic inch version of the 472. Also, this engine did not have a carburetor. It was, throttle uh, it was a throttle body injected engine. It was the standard engine for the El Dorado and the Seville and it was also available in some industrial applications, some ambulances, some hearse vehicles with a four barrel carburetor because they were exempt from emissions. And they used a quadrajet four barrel on some of the emergency vehicles and so forth that they use that engine in. The TBI system that they used on this engine is actually the same TBI system that GM incorporated on their small block Chevy in the mid 80s. It was known as DFI in Cadillacs or digital fuel injection. It was known as TBI in the Chevrolet. It was basically the same computer system and the same injection system, the throttle body. The 368 had 150 horsepower and 265 foot pounds of torque. So eh, it wasn't that great. Now, unfortunately, their attempts at meeting the fuel mileage of CAF, standards of CAFE failed again. The engine just did not get the fuel economy they were hoping for. So in 1981, Cadillac came up with a new idea and that was the 468 cylinder delete system. What it was is they had a system, electronically controlled system, that would shut down two or four cylinders depending on the power requirements of the engine. So what it would do is there were solenoids on the valves and it would actually hold the valves closed on certain cylinders and cut the fuel off for that cylinder so the engine would only run on the other cylinders. It was a good concept and actually later on when we got better computer systems, there was a lot of vehicles that actually employed that system. But in the early 80s when Cadillac introduced this, it was a miserable failure. And really the reason it was is because the electronics that was controlling this could not keep up with the demands of the engine. If you stomp the throttle to the floor, if you let off the throttle and brake suddenly, the electronics could not keep up with how fast these cylinders need to be energized or de-energized. And so they had all kinds of problems. It caused detonation, it caused excessive carbon buildup, it caused a, a number of problems with that system. And to be honest, most of the dealerships, what they ended up doing is just disconnecting the system altogether and eliminating it and just letting the engine run on eight cylinders. That was their their go-to fix for that because it was just too expensive and just too impractical to try to perfect that. And even when they replaced the electronic parts or tried to repair it, the computer system just didn't have the robust ability to keep up and the system just continuously failed. Now this along with the 5.7 liter Oldsmobile diesel that Cadillacs put in cars during those same years really hurt the reputation of Cadillac. They had two dismal failures in a row. They could kind of blame the diesel failure on Oldsmobile, but again, it was a Cadillac car with that engine. So none of that really panned out or worked for Cadillac. 
I give them kudos for trying, but it just, it just wasn't there. Now those systems, the cylinder delete system and the diesel engine are two outstanding systems that we use a lot today. But at the time in the early pioneering stages, they just made a lot of really bad decisions with the 5.7 Olds diesel when they designed it. That we, and I talk a lot about that in the Oldsmobile video as well. You can see that. And also the 468 or the cylinder delete system, it was just, it was, it was too soon. We didn't have the computer technology to run it and it just crashed and burned, unfortunately. This cylinder delete system was known as modulated displacement. It was like a very technical term. We got a modulated displacement V8. Yeah, it's a turd. <laughs> don't buy it. Everybody learned after the first couple of years, don't buy those cars with the diesel or the modulated displacement, they're junk. Now, the crazy part is the engine that was underneath all of that technology, the gas engine, I mean, not the Oldsmobile diesel, was actually a very good engine. It's the same architecture as the bigger 472 and 500. In fact, the Oldsmobile diesel, like we talked about in the Olds video, in the later years, they actually made a really good engine out of that but its reputation has been had been destroyed and it was too late. Nobody would buy it. The way that the system worked on the Cadillac, the 468 Delete, is it had a floating rocker arm and they would actually use electronics to disengage the rocker arms on that cylinder and hold the valves closed. I thought that was a pretty interesting concept. The mechanical part of it worked, worked fantastic. It was just the electronics that weren't there for it, unfortunately. The 468 engine had 140 horsepower and 265 foot-pounds of torque when all eight cylinders were firing. So if you actually disengage the system and just ran the V8, it's actually a pretty decent engine. Now in 1982, Cadillac came out with their HT or high technology engine. And this was another situation where the engine didn't really, the early stages of this engine were, were pretty terrible. They produced the 4100 or the 4.1 liter engine. It was, a, it was actually an aluminum block with steel sleeves and cast iron cylinder heads, kind of like the old Vega from the 70s. Why they put cast iron heads on that, I will never know, but they had a lot of problems with the bimetal situation compatibility between the block and the heads. They had major head gasket problems. They had oiling problems with the engine. It had head bolts that were about this long and went all the way down and screwed into the main cap area of the engine. I, in the machine shop business, I had some pretty nightmarish situations with the 4.1 because of the head bolts putting stress on the main bores and so forth. And it was just a, uh, it was rushed in produ into production because nothing that they had done with the 468 and some of these other versions of the 472 really worked. The Oldsmobile engines had gone away by that point because the diesel had left a bad taste in their mouth and they just were kind of going away from it, from Oldsmobile altogether. But what they did didn't really work either. The 4.1 is an absolute terrible engine. It is nothing but problems and headaches. It had a 3.406 bore and a 3.307 stroke. It produced 130 horsepower and 190 foot-pounds of torque when it was actually running correctly. The engine also had a very bad problem of pulling the head bolt threads out of the engine. Cadillac's fix for that was just to replace the engine with a new short block. 1987, they came out with an updated version of the 4.1 that was actually not a bad engine. It, they actually had solved a lot of the problems and they got rid of the cast iron heads and put aluminum heads on it. And this was a stronger version of the 4.1. Unfortunately, the damage to the reputation of the 4.1 had already been done. And even though the Elante 4.1 was a much better engine, much improved, it really didn't do well, mainly because the reputation of the 4.1 had basically been destroyed at that point. It had 170 horsepower and 235 foot-pounds of torque, and of course the, the same bore and stroke as the earlier version. Cadillac also came out with a 4.5 version and a 4.9 version. Now by the time they got to the 4.9, they had this engine pretty well corrected. The problems were pretty well corrected. Now the 4.5 liter had a bore of 3.620 and a stroke of 3.307. 
It produced 200, horse, 200 horsepower and 270 foot-pounds of torque and was available in pretty much all of the Cadillac. It also had a roller cam, which was a big upgrade from the 4.1, multi-port electronic fuel injection, which was also a big improvement over the throttle body system used on the 4.1. Now in 1991, Cadillac upped the size again and made the 4.9 liter. The 4.9 liter Cadillac engine is a very good engine. They, there was almost none of the problems materialized with the 4.9 for the most part that happened with the 4.1. Still, the 4.1 had left a bad taste in people's mouths, but to be honest, you know, I've, I have quite a bit of experience with the 4.9 liter and I would not hesitate to buy a Cadillac with that engine in it. It is a very durable, reliable engine very trouble free and makes decent power. The 4.9 was a square engine. It had a bore of 3.620 thousandths and a stroke of 3.620 thousandths. So same bore and stroke, multi-port fuel injection, roller cam, upgraded block and heads that were very durable and reliable and very problem free. Definitely a decent engine and it made pretty decent power for the time. It produced 230 horsepower and 305 foot-pounds of torque. Not a real monstrous powerhouse engine but if you compare the horsepower and the reliability of the 4.9 with the 4.1 it's like night and day. There's no comparison. 4.1 don't ever touch that engine. 4.9 buy it all day long, you'll have very good luck with that. Now in 1993 through 2011, Cadillac produced a very modern engine called the North Star. Some technicians have dubbed this engine the Death Star. Now it was a pretty good engine once they got it perfected. In the earlier years, it had a lot of problems. Head gasket problems, oiling system problems, starter problems. The starter was actually in the lifter valley and you had to pull the intake off to get to it. Head bolt stretch, threads pulling out of the block. It was an all aluminum engine. Excessive oil consumption. It was reported that North Star just could use up to a quart of oil every 500 miles and the dealership just told the consumer, ah, just keep your eye on the oil and keep filling it, which is crazy, but you know, that was their fix for it. Had a lot of problems with oil leakage, very notorious for leaking oil. It also had excessive carbo carbon buildup on the rings and the cylinders due to a PCV and an EGR system that just were not, did not work very well. And it also had fuel injection problems in the earlier years. Now, Again, all of these problems were pretty much ironed out of this engine by the end of its run, but the reputation of the early engines with all these problems was destroyed. Now, another issue with the North Star is this. This is why technicians hate this engine so bad. Because of the way that this engine was installed in the car and the front wheel drive transverse, it was very, very difficult to work on this engine because it was huge and it barely fit under the hood of that car most of the time you would have to pull the entire engine cradle out of the car and set the engine and the front cradle on the ground to work on this thing. And technicians absolutely hated doing that. There are some guys that perfected it and had it down, but for the most part, whenever a North Star came in, the techs were like, eh, I don't want to touch that, it's too much work. There was also engine mount problems, intake gasket problems, and power steering system leaks. But again, it was very hard to work on and get to this stuff. Now, Oldsmobile used a version of this engine in their Aurora that was actually a pretty decent engine and had pretty good power. But again, just because of the reputation that it got, the Cadillac North Star just kind of went away. After the North Star went out of production, Cadillac pretty much went away from V8. They went to basically a, a smaller engine, two six cylinder engines that actually performed pretty well. And the cars were downsized, of course. They were lighter, smaller cars with smaller engines. But they were still considered a luxury line of car even after the North Star. So I hope you enjoyed this. That is basically the history of the Cadillac V8 engines. And again, like all the other videos, I'm sure I left something out. I'm sure there's going to be some Cadillac guys that come on here and tell me what an idiot I am. And, uh, and that's fine. No problem. I'm at the age now where you can say pretty much whatever you want. It's not going to bother me. Just don't get, just don't get political. I don't, want to, I don't want to hear any of that nonsense. So I appreciate you watching and I will talk to you very soon. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next. I'm actually considering 
doing international because believe it or not they did have quite a few v8s over the years and then i want to look at some other obscure car companies like nash and hudson and some of these other manufacturers before they actually either went out of business or were rolled into one of the big three so i appreciate you watching i will talk to you very soon i promise